All right, guys, he's in here. Welcome back to the channel for another Final Fantasy Ever Crisis video. So in this video, we are going to be going over one of the new things that they are adding to the game. Um, this one, really depending on your point of view, you're maybe going to be extremely happy about or you're going to be upset about, who knows. But in essence, we are having our first type of PvP added to the game, okay? Now, it is not going to be active player versus player 1v1 battles it is going to be scoreboard based pvp where you are competing against other players within your pool of players to outscore them to get better rewards so if that's the type of pvp they are going to introduce to this game i think that's like the less egregious of the different types of pvp that could be added it's a bit like if you play dokon you've got world tournament it is PvP, but not in the kind of same vein as something like Dragon Ball Legends, right? So let's take a look at what we can expect from this upcoming PvP mode that is going to be dropping within the game. So let's take a look at this. Just making sure I've got the right image here so that I can show you guys what we're talking about. So if we move to bam, 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 this one here first, you can see the translated images, okay? So first up, if I move my stupid body across here. Event period, the 29th of September, so Friday to October the 6th. Now they are going to be dropping more content on October the 6th. I believe they're going to be starting the Halloween type stuff. Um, and there's going to be like costumes for a couple of characters. I don't know if they showed it, but data mining has suggested it's going to be Sephiroth, Zack and Cloud. But we'll see if that actually pans out. So here we have three dungeon difficulty levels, normal, hard and very hard. There is a ranking event where players compete with each other for their dungeon scores. It is an event where players are randomly divided into groups of 10,000 people and compete amongst themselves or against each other. Event rewards. Ranking reward. The top 10 people will get a title plate that is red and you'll get 20 gacha tickets etc it says so there might be other things there okay the top 100 will get a title plate green and a gacha ticket times 20 okay you can receive gacha tickets and materia synthesis items even if you rank 100 or first or lower okay so looking here at the description i think that etc is probably going to be like materia synthesis items you'll probably just taking a guess here, you'll probably get other materials as well. I think that's most likely what the rewards will be. So don't be shocked if you get like nano cubes and stuff like that possibly. Um, but I guess it will be tiered within the rewards. So maybe the top nano cube type things will be given in the top 10. Maybe it will go down a tier when you get to the top 100. Maybe when you're with 100 or lower you'll get like rose gold and stuff like that it seems logical that that's probably what will happen right gacha tickets i would expect will probably decrease as you go down the the rankings that seems fairly standard and normal <clears throat> obviously if you're grouped in a group of 10,000 then you've got a bunch of whales it's going to be difficult okay it's going to be difficult that's pretty much what these events are for they're usually designed to stimulate more spending because people will spend more money to get rewards that actually would cost them less to buy than it does to spend money to get stronger to get them it doesn't make a lot of sense but hey it's typically what happens in these games people will literally spend thousands to get a reward that's maybe worth about 20 bucks right but don't expect anything different to happen with this game right total score reward so everyone can get this. 1.2 million or more total uh, title icon red. 600,000 or more title icon green. And you can see the two icons there um, if you care about them. I don't, but hey, you might. First rank reward, maximum blue crystals, 3,400. So obviously, first rank reward, that's going to be one person. Okay, so if you kind of take all that information that we've got there, what you'll probably find is the rewards will likely be the top 10 will get a varying degree of blue crystals. On top of that, they'll get the title plate and they'll get the gacha tickets and expect that to happen top 100 all the way down. So I would expect all these rewards to basically be your blue crystals, your title plate, 
your gacha tickets and materials and it'll just trickle down as you go down the list. That is pretty much what I would expect this to play out like, okay? Finally, we can already see what is essentially going to be our bonuses during this event, okay? So it's basically going to be like Blizzard and Fire that is going to be the two elements if you're using Materia. Um, so like your Flame Blow and your Blizzard Blow or just the actual straight up magic spells, they'll work very well for you. Um, if you've managed to farm up the likes of Ifrit or Shiva's weapons, they're going to work very well for you as well. You might have some fire based weapons for the likes of your Red X, um, stuff like that, you know. Maybe if you've not, you might want to think about farming them up, boosting them up, getting yourself ready. You've got some days left, so you now know what you can target. And it means that when you go into this event, you are going to go in with an upper hand. You can win battles quickly, like it says, and use items as little as possible. So if you currently do the Crisis Dungeon, you will pretty much know how this scoring works, right? The scoring works based on how quickly you progress and you get penalties if you have used items. I don't know if you get penalties or you get bonuses for not using them. So I don't, I've never used an item in a Crisis Dungeon, so I'm not entirely sure if it is a bonus for not using or a penalty for using. Either way, the end result is pretty much the same. So the outcome doesn't really change, right? So realistically, it's going to be tough, right? Because obviously, unless they do different leaderboards for each difficulty, so normal, hard, and then very hard, very hard is going to be, like the name suggests, very hard for people to likely do, right? Because we can take a look now at some dungeons and we can get an idea of the kind of difficulty levels. So let's just look at Mako Reactor 1 and we'll look at normal, hard, and then very hard, right? So you can see here, the power levels we've got here is for normal, you've got between 19 and 32. Most people have probably been playing long enough to do that. And then for hard, you've got between 35 and 64, right? Seems reasonable enough. But then you take a look at very hard and you can see it takes quite the jump. It goes from 78 right up to 148, okay? So if the difficulty scaling on this event is similar to this, you'll probably find that for a lot of players, it's going to be pretty tough to challenge the very hard stages. And obviously, it, it's going to be dominated by people who have wailed on the game, okay? It's just how it's going to be. So there's no point in getting upset about it because it's obvious that's what's going to happen, okay? We need to see, maybe they won't make it as hard. Maybe there'll be certain bonus score multipliers for using certain characters along with the elements that we've just seen there. But hey, you know going into it that you can build yourself up for this, get ready and potentially score more. So fingers crossed, all players can do well on this one. But that's it. That's it, guys. I've been Hazing. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.